yes. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily Facebook Live. I seem to be honing in at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time is my time to do these for some reason. Um, I'll probably choose another time that works for more of a global audience at some point. But in the meantime, this is my daily Facebook Live. And if you haven't seen my broadcast before, um, my name is Barry Selby, as you may have guessed, and I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which probably is what inspires this talk more than anything else. These are my daily Facebook Live talks, um, and they're called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is number 275 in an ongoing series of daily Facebook Live talks. Yesterday I spoke about the demonizing of men and the damage it causes, or the damage it, yeah, the damage it causes. Today I thought I'd just switch and talk about the, de the um, diminishing of women, because it's not, it's not demonizing at all, not so much. Men have been demonized, women have been diminished. Just nice, you know, um, that's what we're looking for, alliteration, that's the word, I think. Um, both start with D anyway. And the damage it causes. So today's talk is really for women, about women, to women, for all audiences to listen to. Um, this is not specifically just for women, or for men for the matter, but I feel there may be some stuff coming up to challenge both genders. So let's have some fun, shall we? Um, and if you're with me for the first time, thank you for joining me. And if you have any comments, questions, or thoughts you want to post, you can do so. If you want to share it out with people you think should see it, please share it with them whilst it's live or in the um, replay. Hi, Jean. Nice to have you here. Thank you for the hi. Um, and then let's get started, shall we? Um, by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, these usually run about 10, 15 minutes, give or take. Um, this one probably be the same. They're not scripted. There's no bullet points. I don't have a cheat sheet. See, nothing in my hands, nothing up my sleeves. Uh, <laughs> it's all free flow. Um, and I've talked about this before in different ways, but I thought I'd just come from the angle of diminishment because... And it's funny, I guess I'm really harking back to watching Black Panther a couple of weeks ago. And it's been a couple of weeks already, wow. And I'm going to go see it again soon. Oh, you're sitting outside waiting for the sunset, how nice. So, you're on the West Coast? So I'm thinking it's about time for sunset, or will be shortly. Um, back on topic. So I watched Black Panther a couple of weeks ago, and I was watching some interviews with the cast and um, director since then. And one of the things that was very clear, which they portrayed very well in the movie, was how women, when they're in the power, and what somebody said, and I think it might have been Lupita who said it, I think it was one of the women that said this, about how in the movie, and again, this is fictitious, this is a superhero movie, so this is the whole thing, but in the movie, the women were no different from the men in terms of rank, um, listening to each other, there was no hierarchy in the sense of that anyone looked down upon. And in fact, there were leadership. And the comment that one of them made, I can't remember who made the comment, actually. Arizona, oh, okay, yes. So less than an hour, right. Because <laughs> you know, That's right, because Arizona doesn't have a time change, whereas we do in California, uh, which will be in about two or three weeks, I think. Anyway, getting back on track. I recommend it. I recommend the movie. It is amazing. Um, but anyway, so let, let me just <laughs> let me get to that point. <laughs> I appreciate all the comments, but I'm like, let me get to the point so I can exp express this more clearly. So again, in the movie, one of the comments that was made because these women were in such leadership roles in the strength, in their power, and in their equality that a comment was made about how this fictitious land of Wakanda may be the way it is because of the fact men and women were all on the same team. There was no one up, one down. And in fact, in the movie, to a large degree, none of the characters were like, looking down at anyone else. It was really about looking at each other for their own respective unique roles and reverence to each other, men, women, old, young, indifferent. And that was something that was really wonderful to watch in the movie because it's something we don't, we should, don't really do in real life, unfortunately. So, the diminishment of women in Western society, put it that way, well, it's actually it's global. I, I remember re I was reading something recently, and this is, this is where things can really tug at my heart and they, they upset me, I was and this is overseas, actually. This was in... Um, What's this, Saudi Arabia, where a woman who reported rape, even though the guys were given, it's like a six-month sentence, something ridiculously small, she went to jail because she shouldn't have been out in public without an escort. 
This is in the this millennium. This is in 2018. This was happening, maybe 2017, in 2000, right now. This woman in Saudi Arabia, where now they're finally given the freedom to drive. Apparently, it's a new gift. Like it was about time they had mobility. But she was in, give, was put in jail because she shouldn't have been outside in in the world without an escort, like her dad or her brother, or whatever. And so the rape was partly her fault, is the way they looked at it through the judges. That's the insanity. Now, that doesn't happen in this country, at least I don't think it does. But it's something that is on a global level where women have, come, have been given the short end of the stick, as it were. They've been given a diminished place to be and express. And it's frustrating to watch. Yeah, it is. It's, well, they are, the, yes, it's sad to hear that, and yes, they are empowering themselves. And yet, there's such a um, uphill battle in a way to be fought because unfortunately unlike Wakanda's model which was projected as being that way from forever when it began and talking a lot recently in the interviews that, that all the different characters were talking about um, was about like Chadwick was talking about it on um, The Daily Show I think it was last week this past week he was talking about how Wakanda was this one of the oldest cultures and so the, the language they use which is the South African the, the South African dialects and accents were portrayed to be some of the oldest languages and the oldest cultures on the planet. And in their culture, women were always equal from the get-go. So it shows us the comparison with what's happening in the Western world, where women are now, in to a large degree, fighting for that place of equality, fighting for that ability to be recognized, and fighting for that full value to be expressed and received. It's, it's diminishing in a way to... For me to witness this, well, it feels it feels like women have been diminished because when I watch this in life, I was talking to somebody about this recently, and maybe in one of the broadcasts I was talking to somebody about how we none of us will be here if it wasn't for women because women give birth to all the people on the planet. So all seven billion people on the planet came through a woman, well, a multiple, multiple women, excuse me. But the reality is that life itself is birthed through women, and yet the reverence for women for that is not provided, generally speaking. There's so much that we're missing. And yes, I talked about it on two days ago, I think. I'm trying to remember the broadcast. About women, the sexual revolution, women getting their freedom, in quotes, and their independence, in quotes, to find their own way through life and to get out of the world and do their own thing. At the same time, it can only work for women when they adopted male ways of doing things. The ability to get out and get their own jobs and, and get paid and have their own places, they were basically copying what was already done by the men. It wasn't unique, authentic expression by the women. That's happening more now, where women are owning their goddess and, as I've been calling it, the priestess level of expression. But there's so much more to do. And there are men like myself who stand up for women, who honor that and, and re have reverence for women in general, and especially for women who are stepping into their feminine leadership and power, which is awesome and about time. Um, I'm watching ways to say that that is, is an important discussion to continue to keep having and to open up the space because the direction we're heading in, and this is the one I've talked about a couple of times about this because I feel this big, the, this energetically speaking. Well, let me use, the, use, let me use this as an example. Um, Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin, who are both basically forcing themselves to be in power once again for beyond their regular term, Thank you, Gina. I appreciate the feedback. Yes, so much more to do. Yes, um, you and many are stepping alongside of us. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Um, so Vladimir Putin did a State of the, the Nation talk a couple of days ago where he threatened everybody with these big nuclear bombs, which, to be honest, I got a feeling that was a lot of uh, bravado because I don't think he actually had them because it was all animated. It was animation. It wasn't live action because he wasn't going to waste the bombs, I guess. But the truth is, you know, you could do that on your home computer now to do an animation that looks like a bomb traveling around the world. So I don't know. But the fact that it's basically just, you know, shaking his stick like a big ego, like, look at me, I'm a big tough man. And Xi Jinping in China is working to get the laws changed so he can be elected for life, which is another one of those uh, throwbacks to the old ways. There's a reversal in some ways of the progress that's being made in certain countries and big countries that aren't helping the women. And... The direction this, country, this world, excuse me, this planet is heading in isn't going to be one of expression, creation, and wholeness unless the women are in, in charge, in leadership, equal to or in, pla in place of the men, to be blunt. I have no problem with women leading the planet. Some men do. I'm very clear about that. 
but this diminishment that's happened so far for many generations, the, 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 the damage it causes, I was trying to, just to summarize the title, has been where women haven't been trusting themselves to step into their leadership, into their power, into their authority, because men have been afraid of them. Yes, men have been afraid of you women. It may come through different ways, but basically the way what men have done to women in a lot of ways is control, subdue, suppress, um, con- um, to say control? It is say control. Because they're afraid. You ladies have a power that you don't bring in. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, I do admire you strong lady women. However, and let me be clear, Jean, when you're leading as a woman in your masculine, I dated women like that, and it's not good for you, it's not good for the men. So strong leader women, when you're in your feminine power, whether you call it goddess or priestess, are the two words I play with a lot in this conversation, is where truly I admire strong, powerful leader women is in the feminine. So just to be clear, I want to make sure you get that from me. <laughs> as anybody knows me knows that's my truth. This um, shift has to come soon. You know, we're now in a place where we may have... I was... Um, I see a lot of posts I've been watching recently about the conversation. Yeah, goddess. I personally... And this is, this is my, my, my label, my judgment. Um, I think goddess is a, half, is a half step. Goddess is not the destination. I believe goddess for many women is the first step to awaken to their flow and, desire, and their life force in a great expression of vulnerability and dance and flow and energetics. But it's the priestess that is the power of the feminine. It's that connection to spirit, that decisive action that can be very warrior-like, but it's from a feminine heart and a feminine guidance, which is what I think this planet is in sad lack of, in need of, in fact. So, and yeah, the shift is way overdue, exactly. So, more and more I'm finding myself speaking this conversation beyond the relationship paradigm, because, yes, if women stepped into their feminine and owned their power as the goddess, the priestess, whatever you want to call that, in life, not always in business, I know it's not easy to do yet, but in life, it will actually help them attract a healthy relationship because they'll force a man who's willing to, to trust her in that, not be afraid of her, and step into his masculine. A powerful, healthy relationship, which I'm very aware now that I've seen in the last 10, 12 years, has been the piece I was missing, now I understand what it is, is a man in his masculine and a woman in her feminine are way more powerful and more connected um, to be more aligned to express and unify in a powerful way. So you've been suppressed and other value respect is yin yang and trust is everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, important in communica- in in important in relationship, in business, in life. And ladies, for quite a lot of you, you haven't trusted yourselves. You haven't trusted your feminine. You've actually thought that you had to be like the men to fit in, to succeed, and you were lied to. Your true power comes from your feminine. I, talk, I talked about the teachings I got from the Warrior Sage program years ago. I talked some broadcasts about how the power of the feminine is so much more than women think. And it's more powerful than men think too. The way one analogy I've used before, which I got from Warrior Sage, is all three realms, yes. Thank you, Jean. Um, the, the way the feminine's power is truly expressed is the power of a mighty river. The massive force of that water cascading of the river is the power of the feminine the banks are the structure that the masculine presents but the masculine doesn't contain the water it just simply creates a space for the water because the water is of power enough that it could burst the banks at any time if the, if the river gets even more powerful more um, um, what's the word looking for It'll come back to me but the, when a woman is um in her true power and force, a man's got to be really strong in his, in his framework to support that, not to control it, but to support that. And in the sense that the river banks support the river, they don't control the river, because the river actually forces its way through into the way it goes down. When we've watched, um, if you look on like um, satellite views of rivers, big rivers that go through landscape, they cut their own way through the landscape. The landscape then creates a structure to support that river staying where it, in being in its flow and staying strong. So I use that analogy a lot because for many women, you don't realize how much power you have. And it's not a power to battle. It's a power that flows into life. So that's the positive direction. And this, the price you pay or the 
um, damage that's done is that women have been repressed for too long. So, thank you, Jean. Um, it's, it's something that is, is definitely past due, and I, I didn't plan on necessarily going to go this way again. These talks are not scripted or planned, but I want to do something about this topic again because it was coming up again for me. So when it comes up, I've got to speak about it. I'm just seeing if there's anything else I need to say on this at this point. I think that's about it. Um, if you, let me say this. If you have any thoughts, comments, and questions, please put them below in, in the, um, the comments below. If it's on here on Facebook Live or if you're watching it uh, later on, you'll be watching it on YouTube, you can put comments in there. I'll respond accordingly in those places. If you want to talk more about this in, deep, in deeper detail, please reach out to me over social media. Um, if you're looking for help in the area of becoming more feminine, owning your power in love, life, and business, that's my work. So reach out to me. Uh, you find these broadcasts, number 275, I think it is. Um, all 275 are on Facebook, on my business page, on... Um, well, thank you, Gene. Succinctly is my, my preference. I don't want to spend an hour talking about it if I can do it in, in 10, 15 minutes. Um, you can find these on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, on the Messages from the Masculine playlist. And on my website, which of course is barryselby.com. Um, you can click on the video blog to watch all of my replays from way back from early last year, all 275. So with that... Um, Thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me. McCall, you missed it. I'm wrapping up. You have to go back and watch from the beginning when I sign off. <laughs> this, is, this is, by the way, is the counterpoint to yesterday's broadcast, which was about the demonization of men. So if you didn't watch that broadcast, please watch number 274, which was yesterday's, because um, that was a different perspective about how men, we men, have been um, de uh, demonized and suppressed. So, yes, thank you for that. That's okay, no problem. You were there yesterday, you got to watch it. So, Gene, I invite you to watch that one yesterday, by the way, too, if you didn't see yesterday's broadcast. It's a good talk about the masculine and what we've been missing out on as well. So this is kind of both halves of the conversation. So, yeah, I know you did, McCall. <laughs> you were there. I witnessed you commenting and watching on the wall. But Senator Gene, who I don't think did see that broadcast. All right. Um, with that, <laughs> thank you for being with me. Um, please, please, please take care of yourselves. Be gentle with yourselves. Respect yourselves. And I'll be back in tomorrow. Um, sometime in the afternoon. I've got a birthday party and I've got the Oscars. I've got to figure out when I'm going to do it. But I'll do some, one tomorrow because um, I lose every day. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for being here. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, guys. <laughs>